answer more of your questions. So I start the recording now. In the chat, I sent again the link to the GitHub so you can access it like that as well. And here is the link. This is the GitHub. So today, by the end of today, I want you, you will be able to install the Ubuntu subsystem on your own Windows 10 machine. You will be able to install and run sample scripts that we give you in root, which is the main C++ code that most labs and experiments in at least nuclear physics used worldwide. And how to install Anaconda, Spider, and Jupyter Notebooks, all tools useful for Python on Windows. So here I wrote very detailed um, instructions such that without any uh, background in programming of any kind, you should be able to just blindly follow those steps and get everything working. So of course, we want you to learn something. We don't want you to do everything blindly. But I think the first step to gain some confidence is just to see the code working. And then you can go back through everything and everything should start to make sense. But first, we will get things working so that you can actually start with a good foundation. So all the instructions are here on the link that I sent yesterday. Um, did anybody try that? Uh, is there anybody who tried that already since I sent them yesterday? Um, oh, here. So if you want to talk or if you want to tell me in the chat if anybody tried it, yes or no, there's no problem. We're going to go through everything step by step. And um, so now I'm assuming that everybody starts with a Windows 10. Is there anybody who's not running Windows 10 on their laptop or desktops? Hmm. So now I'm going to need some answers so I can keep going. Can you just explain when you're not using Windows 10? So what are you using if not Windows 10? I'm not using my laptop now, so I can't answer you. My laptop okay. is at home. I'm not at home now. Okay, so Windows 8 does not have this Ubuntu subsystem. So, okay, so we have a few people working with Windows 8. So this solution, the Ubuntu subsystem is not going to work. Is there a reason why you are not upgraded, upgrading to Windows 10? Yes, they can upgrade. Daphne said that she looked at a, a, sur a survey or a question questionnaire, some questions on the Microsoft website, and uh, they can tell you if you should upgrade or not. But the Ubuntu subsystem here works very, very well. However, it only became available with Windows 10. If you have Windows 8, you can still 2011, okay. Um, the, the Ubuntu subsystem is only available for Windows 10. So we will have other solutions in, um, in the works that will come for 312, but today we'll go over what Windows 10 can do. So it's unfortunate, but it started then. So I know Daphne said that she can't. Yes, everything at UWC will be all set up perfectly. You'll have access to anything. Um, so um, yeah, so the first thing I would say, if you have Windows 8, you should consider upgrading to Windows 10. It's been running for a few years now, and it is uh, very helpful, and it has more and more useful settings, even for scientists. Otherwise, we will have to um, 
either installed Ubuntu on your system with Windows and Ubuntu as a dual boot. So that is something a little bit more complicated and you can only run one at a time. And uh, we might have other solutions um, that is not independent on your laptop. So we'll go over that. So the, the first thing, just answer for yourself if you can update to Windows 10. Otherwise, everything else that we go through here, besides installing Ubuntu, you'll be all able to use those commands and those lines on the physics labs or Ubuntu directly. But here I am offering to you a solution that runs directly on Windows 10. So here I'm using my laptop, which is on Windows 10. And I have all my Windows utilities. And at the same time, I have a full Ubuntu machine over here. So I have my own terminal. I can open more than one terminal. I can do a lot of things. So this is what we want you to get started on today. So even if you're on Windows 8, just uh, keep listening because we will get to things that will be useful to you as well very soon. So if we start going through those instructions, where do I open my Windows 10 start menu? This is the start menu. Okay, so yes, we're start. <laughs> Let's start that. So step one, open the Windows 10 start menu. This is the Windows 10 start menu. And I search, turn Windows features on or off. Nope, that's not what I meant. Turn Windows features on and off. Can I do that? Okay, so mine is in French, so it doesn't actually work word for word. Turn off features. Hmm. Okay, turn. Can anybody see that? See that option on their English computers? Um, features. Okay, here. This is what it is in French. So you should have a menu like this in English. And in the list, there will be Windows subsystem for Linux. I already activated it. So here in French, sous system Windows for Linux, you check this box and you click OK and you have to restart your computer for it to activate. This is the first step. You just find this box and restart your computer. Then you install Xming. Xming is what we call an X server and you will need this on to look at any graphical interface into your uh, Ubuntu machine. So you click here, you download, you install it. So this is Windows. So most of those things, everything you install on Windows is uh, very easy. You don't need any packages or anything special. So I trust that you can install something on Windows already. And you run Xming. So uh, once you install it, you go in your start menu. I pinned it over here. Uh, it's called either Xming or it's launch, X launch like here. And you just click next, next, next. Okay. And when you look in your menu at the bottom right here, there should be the logo of Xming server. So once you have this here, it is running. And later on, when you try something graphical in your Ubuntu machine, you will be able to see it. When you reboot the computer, you will need to turn it on again. So this is why I always have pinned it here. So every time I reboot my computer, I turn it on in order to um, see graphical 
things. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so I put the, the, the note here that you have to rerun it every time. I mentioned that because even I forget all the time. I try to run something and I wonder why it's not opening. It's because Xming hasn't been turned on before you open the terminal. So if you open the terminal and then turn Xming, it's not going to work. So I, I try to put as much details as possible here. I've been, like Nico said, I've been using that for many years. I was able to do my whole PhD from technically a Windows machine, but using all types of tools like this one to access uh, Linux computers, because this is uh, non-negotiable to continue in research uh, and physics. We need those uh, nice coding um, tools. And using the subsystem over here, you don't have to choose. You can have Windows and Linux and all the tools at the same time. Uh, is Nico, you want to say something? Um, no, maybe, maybe we uh, should we allow them to reboot the system and, and come back? Or that's uh, it will take only five minutes. Why don't we do, Why don't we do that? So yes, we no are problem. all in the same page. Why don't we do actually, uh, guys? What do you think? Can we just uh, Why don't you reboot the system? We are here, and we give you five minutes to to turn on the 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 features on on the Ubuntu subsystem. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and restart your computer and we, and we come back. We're going to be here waiting for you guys. Is that okay? I just want to, I just want to make sure that everyone has everything under control. At least mm -hmm. those with Windows 10, you know, those with Windows 8, we'll ask uh, Sunet. I think Sunet is, is, is here with us today. Ah, Sunet is here, Sunet. Yes, I am. So maybe, uh, what do you think about the, the students who have Windows 8? They cannot use all these nice tools because they are only available on Windows 10. Can yes, we is, can we help them? And limited. Yeah, can we help them with the upgrading with the Ubuntu 8? I mean, the the Windows 8 to Windows 10. Um, that involves licensing. So if we have um, <laughs> if we have an image from UWC that has a license attached, I mean, I'm sure we can do that. Please, so, so that would be great. Once the, the lab is the PC lab is open. Yeah. Everything we learn here today and the next days, hopefully those guys with there are only a few, right? I think there are only three. Yeah, that's not a problem. I can I can basically just uh, ghost one of the PCs in inside the lab, and then just ghost it and then um, duplicate it to the to the machines. Great, great. So now you are a very very helpful uh, tool to, to for us to for all of us. Thank you so much, my friend. Not a problem. So. Uh, what else, Nikita? I mean, let's let's uh, get everyone to. Obviously, we have a we have a plan B. The plan B is to go to Ubuntu directly, but then you lose the some of the features of Windows. I personally uh, don't like. Uh, I'm more like a, more uh, a little bit um, more radical. I don't like anything related with with Windows, but uh, because in in Ubuntu everything is for free. So mm -hmm. in Windows, everything costs money. Um, I am more like a, on, the, on the Robin Hood case. You know, I don't, I don't, uh, I prefer free open sources, but I understand that Windows has many, obviously nice games and everything. You know, it has, uh, it has uh, the, the particular positive uh, things, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, the option B, the plan B is to just to install Ubuntu on your system and get rid of any Windows 8 or anything. You know, you start installing from scratch. And this is what, uh, what some of your friends have done, like uh, Ansil and, and Chad. And Chad, you sent a, a link. Remember how to install Ubuntu from scratch in your system? Can you send it again to the physics, uh, to this chat and to the physics 312? As an option, option B, those who have Windows 8, you can from scratch install Ubuntu or wait for the PC lab to open and, and Sunet, Sunet will, will help you with the, with the upgrade to uh, Windows 10. So chat, uh, please, and oh, Ansil, please send me, send the, the link to the chat. Uh, 
-hmm. and to the physics 312 whatsapp group uh, again about how to install ubuntu from scratch ubuntu as i say is the operating system in any national facility any any big laboratory in the world scientific laboratory they will have uh, ubuntu and it's our south african operating system so we should be proud of it so that's it, uh, Nikita, for the time being. Okay. So. Um, okay, so hopefully everybody had time to restart if they wanted to. Um, so it it should it won't look anything different. Um, you, it's just something that's enabled now, so that yeah. it will be accessible through the Microsoft Store. So um, yeah, we've done Xming. So step three is to install Ubuntu through the Microsoft Store. So we click on the link here and we have link for Ubuntu 16, 18, 20. Um, I've tried the machine in Ubuntu 18 and 20 and I've had no issues to install everything we need. So it's up to you. I don't know if anybody has a preference so far they've both been working well for me uh, no i think i think the best option is to install the latest version i mean those who have a version already installed and they are at the end of the psd thesis and they're working on the thesis i, I don't recommend <laughs> to change the version in the last in the last minute but those who are starting a new it's good that they they install the the latest version which is lts means means long um uh, long-term support right right so long-term mm -hmm. support so it's a uh, Every two years, you get a, one of these long-term supports. And it, the 20 is the version, and four because the this version comes in April every year, every two years. OK, good. So then everybody should choose Ubuntu 20. And then it brings you to the Microsoft Store like a regular app. And you click Get. It will download. It will install. And you will be ready to go. So uh, if we go here, we install this. And then uh, when it's, it has uh, downloaded, it will open this. It will open the terminal directly. And the very first time, it will ask you to set up a username and password. And right. that, that will be it. You will have your brand new Ubuntu system on your Windows machine. So the first, yes, it is beautiful. The first thing to do when you get a new computer is to make sure that it is up to date. So um, where is my machine here? So here, um, for now, you don't need to understand those comments, but we will upgrade. And you will see that all the comments to install different programs, different packages, they all start with sudo apt. So first we just do upgrade. So I copy pasted this in my terminal and I press enter. It asks me for my password. Hmm. And then it tells me uh, everything that could be upgraded and new things that are not installed yet. And do you want to do it or not? So I won't do this right now, but you should do that. And of course, the first time you do it, it takes longer because not everything is up to date. But just looking quickly at the list, you have many, many things in there. You already have some Python libraries. You have a lot of packages to just, uh, and lib, lots of libraries to run many, many things in, um, in Linux, in Ubuntu. So the first step, you want to start fresh. You want everything up to date. And something that is going to be very helpful, of course, we want to write codes. We want to edit codes. So we're going to install. But before, before, before we do that, uh, uh, Nikita, let's, uh, let's give them a little bit of introduction on how to, to do this. For instance, you know, first you do sudo apt uh, update, and then sudo apt upgrade. So sudo means super user do. So that's why Nikita is input is, is, is she has to write down the, the 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 password, right? Super user do apt update. First we update as uh, we are saying right we are seeing right now we are updating our repository. 
So there are different repositories that we have. Uh, we have, uh, you know, international. We have also the repository at Stellenbosch University, the one at, at uh, UCT. There are different uh, Ubuntu repositories, um, and normally, the best thing is to choose the 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 closer one. But uh, you know, in this case, it doesn't really matter because you don't do this very often. So the sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade, and then there are many uh, links to that you can go and say, okay, what to do uh, once you install Ubuntu 20.04. 10, 10 things to do once you install Ubuntu 10 uh, 20.04. And you will have uh, a bunch of uh, web pages. So very important to understand that uh, here we are not like uh, the super gurus of computing. There are lots of people computing at the same time. Most of the questions are answered in Google, right? Google will have answers for everything. So 10 things or 20 things to do after installing Ubuntu. And you can install a bunch of programs that, uh, that you want to, for instance, if you want to actually select uh, uh, something, a program, say, let's say VL VLC. So then let's do, let's do the Nikita sudo apt uh, cache. Yes. And this is a sudo apt and then cache with, uh, with the negative sign with uh, cache. Uh, the, uh, apt, yeah, but, but together. apt cache, cache is like a C, yeah, C A C H E. Yeah. Oh, cache, yes. Cache, yeah. And then uh, a space search. Search. VLC, you know, yes. the program that you normally use to enter. And then you have here all the VLC plugins, Bing, data, program. And you can install, obviously, you probably have already VLC in your, on your Windows machine. So you don't need to install this, right? Mm -hmm. But there are programs like, uh, for instance, Grace. Grace is a very nice program to plot data. And then you can say, okay, sudo apt cache uh, gray, search for gray, right? And there uh, we go, somewhere is somewhere up there is gray and the G. Grace. Uh, here, there we go. So gray is XY graphing and plotting tool, which I like very much. So we can install, probably Nikita has it already, but you can do sudo apt install gray, right? And then uh, basically you are installing a new program which is going to be beautiful for you to uh, to plot. You just have a, an editor, as Nikita will show you next. And with that editor, you have X, an X column and a Y column. And we can teach you guys how to plot data and how to do regressions, how to do a bunch of things with this with this uh, with this new software. So basically, we are opening a new world of uh, of. Uh, secrets and magic to you guys because this mm -hmm. there are many many things here that we can uh many programs that have been developed freely for everyone to use and uh, not only here in south africa but worldwide right mm -hmm. so now uh now nikita is installing grace and now you have uh you have a new program with which another day we will use this grace actually in for whenever we need to plot some data in one of the practices, we're going to use Grace as well for you to, to learn how to, how to plot things in, in a professional manner. All right. Thanks, Nikita. Thank Please, you, uh, you know, you need the, you yes. want to tell them about the editor. You need an editor. Yes. So uh, it must be finishing to installing Grace. Sifiso is, is saying just like that, Nikita. So Sifiso is amazed that things are. Sifiso Changasi is a professor from Unisulu, and we have yes. we, we have invited them as well to attend this uh, oh, this class. Yes. And and just yeah. like that, Nikita, very easy. Sifiso, yeah. how are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, 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 I actually try I actually tried it, and it was difficult. But Nikita has just made everything easy for me. <laughs> now it now is. <laughs> but this is what you needed, right? A little bit of uh, a little bit of help. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So now it's okay. Is it so? Just let us know. You you get struggle. I mean, you struggle with that, or you manage to to run your Ubuntu machine within your your Ubuntu subsystem. 
within your Windows machine. Let us know in the in the feedback in the in the chat whether whether you are successfully uh, doing what Nikita is, is doing. I mean, you can always go back to the video, and we'll send the video to everyone. But uh, please let us know in the chat if you are uh, up to to this point where we are right now, because we just we can keep going, but we want you to to be at, on the same page. Yes, so uh, the, the longest step would be to download Ubuntu, so we probably right, uh, lost right, a few that... people there. But once you get there, you have your username and password and you have a machine. So it, it is a kind of shocking at how easy it is. So it is. like a, that, that made me a, a big fan of Windows 10 just because of this, because it's so much easier to have both machines available at once. So the, this is a, a huge plus to have my own Linux machine, Ubuntu machine here. Um, Beautiful, Nikita. It is, it is. So here uh, we just install Grace and in the same way we can install Emacs, which is a text editor. So you're going to need that a lot to edit some of the codes or the scripts we've been doing. And uh, my goal here, the next step is to get you at root so that you can reproduce everything that Nico and Jeremy showed us last month in the mini school. So there's a few steps to get you there, but today we can install everything and make sure that you're able to do that. So the first step is just to get, of course, Ubuntu running and a text editor. So here it's telling me that I don't need to upgrade it or install it because I installed it today. So it is uh, all mm -hmm. set to go. But did you do sudo apt cache, I mean, cache, cache uh, and, uh, and search, you will see that there's a, the Emacs, the, the latest version is actually 27, but in the repository is you have up to 25. So it's always good to, so this Emacs is a very powerful uh, text editor for programming. He has lots of uh, keywords, you know, control X, control S to save your document. You know, it's a really, really powerful. Uh, and everyone who is using um, quantum computers, normally they use Emacs, you know, uh, I know from NIFEP, NIFEP's International Institute for Theoretical and Computational Physics, um, they all use uh, Emacs. So it's a very powerful tool. And you have Emacs 27 and 25, I think somewhere. If you just type uh, search Emacs 25, I think that's the, the latest version of. I did uh, cache. Uh, let me see, cache. Uh, let me see what you did. Emacs 20, put two, two and, and a star. Two there, Emacs two, a star. Yeah, and see what, hap what, happen what happens. Uh, a lot of, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of things are related to Emacs. Yes. Uh, but too many things. No, forget about that. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. So, so Emacs uh, 25. Emacs, Emacs 25 is the letter. I know I, I installed it. The okay. Emacs so 25 the um, that's the latest okay. version. Actually, 20, 27, but that's what it is in the repository right now. Where is it? Okay. Do, so, how do you get 25? Do you uh, just do cache, cache search 25? Emacs 25. I think it should come. Uh, just okay. do, do it again. Yeah. Do that 25, yeah. Uh, no, maybe it's not in the in your repository. Maybe Emacs, let me see in my, I don't know. Maybe that, but that's okay, as long as, as, long as, uh, as Emacs works, it's fine. Yeah. Whenever, Nico, you figure out the best version, I can add it in the instructions here. But now that we've installed that, we just want to test yeah. that it's actually working. So right, to right. open Emacs, you just type Emacs and press enter. And since my Xming is on, I can use graphical uh, interfaces. And this is what I have here. So I have Emacs running. I know that I can run graphics and Ubuntu is working. So that's already right. a huge step that uh, you, you have working for you. And uh, if anybody has issues while going through all of this, of course, you can put it in the chat or ask us questions later in the WhatsApp group. Um, but just follow those steps carefully and uh, it should work. It should work. So I tried it on three different machines over the last week, 
And those are the instructions that I got working for everybody, all the computers. Uh, if those instructions are not enough, I put the link here to the all the instructions of the subsystem. So there's many, many pages on this website, a lot of information and troubleshooting. So if you have some issues, have a look there first. Otherwise, Google is very useful. There's lots of people all over the world who use those tools. So most likely the issue you're having, somebody already asks support for it online. So Google is a good place. And then of course we as a team are there to help you. And all the, your colleagues are going to go through the same steps. So you can also uh, refer to, to your friends and your colleagues. So that is a big step. And then uh, Nico showed us how to find other, um, other programs that we, that we want to, to install. So the next- So next... Loren, Loren has an issue. He cannot install Emacs. He says, I try installing Emacs and it said, unable to locate package. So then uh, what you do, Loren, you just sudo apt update, sudo apt mm -hmm update just to upgrade basically to update your repository mm -hmm. uh is in a process of downloading ubuntu just the matter of connection soon be done okay so the people are installing and downloading ubuntu still mm -hmm. and then you do always do sudo apt update and sudo apt uh, upgrade yes. uh, once you do that you should be able to have emacs you, you should you should have uh Emacs in the in the in the particular repository, in a particular repository that you are you have access to with mm -hmm. all these programs. Um, once you have that, you can just do sudo apt install Emacs and then or Emacs uh, as Nikita say GTK. But also, if you just do Emacs, it should work the same way, I think. What is the GTK for, Nikita? I'm not sure. That's the name that worked. Yeah. Uh, Hold on. Where is it? Here. Sudo app install Emacs. Actually, uh, sorry, maybe uh, sudo apt, uh, and then you have. Uh, mm. Yeah, it was the, the, yeah, the so spelling. It's just one of the versions for it i don't know which one is the best one so yeah we, we need if you to do if you do what? if you do for instance emacs uh, and then this and typing this in the it will tell you which version you have installed you know in the in the chat i just uh, adding a new command to check any program which version you have in your computer right emacs and you just copy that and it will tell you uh, nikita the version that you are using right there So 26.3, you see, you have even a, a more updated version than me. I only have the 25 point something. Okay. So, so uh, yep. this is a big, uh, a big exciting thing about the Linux and Ubuntu worlds. You have a lot of freedom and a lot of versions that you can pick. So um, it, it's, it's different than Windows. It's something uh, to, to get excited about. Right. Okay, so now I um, understand everybody is still downloading, but um, we will just keep going through the, the instructions and uh, you'll catch up. So uh, that's why I sent the instruction yesterday. Hopefully uh, some people could have downloaded the things, but um, it, it's not a problem. You'll catch up very quickly. So, right, uh, and then let's uh, install mm -hmm. next. Nikita will show you how to install different programs, right? Mm -hmm. Including, uh, I actually, instead of Python, uh, we'll install Python 3. Most of the, just uh, Python 3 is the, is the one which comes with all these extra libraries like Pandas. Uh, you know, Python 3 is, is a better version. So in, in the, in the, in the README, I think if we have Python 3 uh, dev and Python 3 whatever, 
uh, because I have some issues just if we have only Python with some of the new libraries. No, um, I you have, okay, I, Python 3, yeah, right, perfect. Yeah, mm, I think most programs now have both at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, so it, it's not yeah. a problem. Using those lines here will have everything that we Right. We can need or so I, I started those machines from scratch and using those comments for roots that included everything I I need so far. So okay. I think that that should be enough for for most people. And um, yes, I, I tested a lot of things. So let, let's start there. And yeah. you should be you should be good for for a while. Um, Okay, so now we're going to install Root, which is a, a big software uh, software toolkits uh, packages in C++ that uh, are useful for many, many things, especially, so it is written by CERN, of course. So I, I will say all particle physicists and nuclear physicists use Root or all major labs. And it's something that we, we really have to be on top of to be mm -hmm. able to do analysis on the, the worldwide scale. But not only, only there and the GITA, but also in many astronomy uh, observa observatories uh, everywhere, in biology, everywhere where you need big data. Ruth has been very uh, powerful and many people from different fields are now mm -hmm. using it. It's like the internet. The internet was uh, discovered at CERN also, and mm -hmm. um, then it spread all over the place. So CERN developed these uh, beautiful codes for data analysis, but these codes, or this software is actually being, uh, you know, distributed to different uh, fields and to different laboratories throughout the world. So this is a, a program which I don't know if uh, if. You know, you, it, 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 let's, see, let's see whether Nikita is, will, will install it nicely for you, very, very easily, just by, by getting the binary file. So you can run it and we can show you later very easily how to, uh, how to compile and how to get some uh, mathematical modeling as we did with the, um, with the mini school at NIFEPS, right? So we are going to do that, but this is, this is mainly a tool, as Nikita say, that you will, need for your uh, postgrad studies. So the, the sooner we are familiar with that, the better. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And uh, it, it is true. Now it's, uh, I, I know of particle in nuclear physics, but everybody uses it now because it is such a useful tool that can be adapted to so many different types of work and field. So um, it is definitely something useful to know and be comfortable with. And here in five steps, it will be all set up and re to, ready to go on your Ubuntu subsystem on your Windows machine. This is how powerful and useful it's going to be. Step one, we need packages. Every time we need, we want something on Ubuntu and Linux, we need some packages and libraries. So uh, we have already a very nice list on the root website. So here uh, in the instruction to installed root, it gives us a list of all the dependencies. So prerequisite packages. And here we are on, on Ubuntu. So uh, we have the list here of required packages. And um, those are things that root uses, but also mostly everything we use really. We need compilers in C++. GCC is useful, of course, Python, and uh, libraries for images. Lib is all different types of libraries uh, that includes a bunch of package packages. And we can combine the installations of all those packages by doing sudo apt get installed and the name of all those packages on the same line. So here, um, I give you the link to go directly to the root website, but I also copied the lines, the two lines with all the libraries. So those are all the required libraries, required packages over here. 
and they also give you the most common optional packages that will be useful for the codes that the, the special codes we're going to use. So I also copied this line for you over here, and then you need to install uh, all those packages by copying those two lines one at a time in uh, your terminal. So Nico, do you have any comments on those packages maybe? Or not? Here, and I don't want to update them right now, but you copy this line, you press enter, it's going to um, install all those packages. Those are the required. So root cannot work without all of those. And then I copy paste this line again. I paste it, I press enter. It's going to tell me what needs to be updated. Um, to install all those packages, everything needs to be updated and upgraded over here. Otherwise, there might be some issues. So now that we have all the prerequisites, the next step is to decide which release of root we want. So here we have a list of all the, the releases. So the link here are all the versions of root available. I've been running the latest one and it works, uh, it works nicely. Most of the codes we use require root six now that's been around for a few years. So uh, just go ahead and choose the latest one, which it would be 622.08 right now. And uh, here, if you decided to install Ubuntu 20, you're going to need this file over here. However, you can download it directly in the terminal using the line over here, wget and the link uh, to this file, which is root.cern download. And this is the root tar gz file. Uh, so if I come back here, I'm going to edit that, that link with this file name over here. So uh, I hope that makes sense. The two, uh, you need to edit those two names over here for the exact version that you want to download. So use the latest one for the Ubuntu that you chose. So you copy this, um, this file name over here and you in your terminal you do w where is my terminal here w get blah 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 with the version that you want and it will download it directly in your home directory so when i did it this is my root 20 machine this is the file that i downloaded just by doing w get Next, I want to uh, unpack this. So just like uh, zip files on Windows, we have different types of compression. And here we have a tar.jz. <laughs> so we can do tar minus x z v f and the name of the file here. Um, here you might know you can start writing the name of a file and then hit tab. And it will tell you the list of files that can continue this. So if there's only one, it will finish writing the whole name for you. Um, I don't want to do it right now because I've already have it uh, unpacked here, which is my directory called root six, but this is how you unpack the archive. And that is it. So once you unpack this, this is what we call the binary. It is a pre-compiled version of root for your specific um, platform, your specific system. You download it pre-compiled so that you only have to unpack it and it is ready to go. And that, that is it. You have root running. Um, here, those are the instructions that we've been through. We 
download a pre-compiled binary distribution. So we don't have to worry about building everything from source. It takes uh, a few seconds. The longest step is really to download the file, just like um, to install the Ubuntu. The longest step is really to download it from the Microsoft Store. Here, we download root, we unzip it, and that is it. Um, to make it easier to work with, we want to tell the machine, we want to tell Ubuntu which version of root we are using. So right now it is just in my home directory. I changed the name from root to root six because I'll probably need different versions of root on my computer for different codes that uh, we use. For example, there's an older code that uh, we need to sort data from CERN and it still uses root five. So it is possible to have different versions of the code on your Ubuntu machine. I'll just download a different uh, version and install it in a different directory that I will call root five. So I will have different versions of root. And here, uh, to make sure that it knows where to find the root that I want, I'm going to, in my home directory, use Emacs and open my bash rc file. This is the, the name of the file that I put here. Um, yes, in my home bash rc file, I just want to show everything at once. So that was my home directory. This is where my bash rc file is. I open it with Emacs. Um, no. I'm going to open it like this. Can I do this? Hmm. Nico, the Emacs expert, are you here? Okay, Nico likes Emacs, but he's not there. So I'm going to cheat and use my simpler editor, gedit. And here I have all the settings for my Ubuntu machine. And uh, there's lots of um, settings there and informations. What I want to do here is to add this line. So anywhere in the file, you add the line uh, here. So source and the path to where root is. So in my in my machine, it is in the folder root six in my home directory, my name root six bin this root dot sh. So every time that the machine uh, open or is rebooted, it looks at this bash rc script and it will source this script to know which root to use. So once I installed root five, I can already prepare those lines here. I'm going to comment this out because I don't want to worry about it for now, but I will have a directory that is root five. And I will just have to switch between those two lines to have different versions of roots. You don't have to worry about this right now. I'm just telling you different possibilities that are available with Linux. So in my bash RC, I just added this line, which is the path to the this root.sh script. I close this and now I want to load, I want to, to refresh this script. I want to load again. I want to so, source this script. So source bash rc in my terminal. I press enter. Nothing happens. And now he knows which root I'm using. So first I have different tests for you. The easy test, we will type root in the terminal and we will look if uh, if it works. So this is the first you test. You can do the same thing with the version root, root uh, and this uh, uh, version as we did before for Emacs. And yes. Then, yeah, and then it will tell you which, which version, I think. Uh, no. I think um, it doesn't. Maybe just, just one, one uh, yeah. Okay, which root shows us 
where which directory it's using. I'm not sure about which. No, I don't know what it's doing there. So maybe, yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, it just took a while, but it's six twenty two zero eight. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and now we want to see if it actually works. To open roots, you type roots. And but you don't have to do this, just for everyone to know, just you don't have to do this all the time. I mean, once you open a terminal, uh, dot bash rc does it automatically. And mm -hmm. every terminal, you don't have to do this again. So you can open root yeah. from mm -hmm. anywhere, any program from anywhere, as long as it is in the, in the dot bash rc file. Yes, exactly. So this step four here is so is only done once, so that you never have to look at the directory again. So the, right. this is the point of this line here. Once this line is in your bash uh, RC, you forget about it forever. And no matter where you are in your machine, you can just type root, and it will open up like this. So. Mm -hmm. The root opens up, it's working. And now my easy test here, I am asking you to ask roots if he can do two plus two. I press enter and he knows. That's it. Root knows how to calculate some things. <laughs> so uh, this is the, the easy test, just to see if it actually runs, if it opens. The next step. The medium test is to run our germanium detection efficiency code to obtain the efficiency curve. So here I'm having you navigate a little bit in the GitHub for our group. So I will open this. So the Ubuntu setup is one um, repository or folder in our UWC nuclear. Another one is called root efficiency. It is a C script that uh, does efficiency curves for our terminium detector. So I have some uh, instructions over here for you to run it. It tells you that you need root six. So you've already done that. This is perfect. And you don't have to worry but about- let's, uh, I think let's go step by step. Maybe uh, Nikita, this is a little bit overwhelming to them. Let's, uh, this is a first thing, they don't know what is an efficiency curve. So, yes. so I'm, I don't, uh, yeah. I don't want you to, to worry about it. I just want you to run it so you can see a figure. Right. Right. So don't, don't worry about germanium or anything. I'm just showing you that there are other things on our GitHub. There are many very useful codes that you might enjoy. Uh, and lots of mini schools in machine learning, or uh, I have it open. But here. for them to understand a little bit on, on what is an efficiency curve, every mm -hmm. time we have a measurement, whatever is whatever is the measurement, we need to have an efficiency calibration of our system. Either is a is a is a telescope, is salt, is an array of uh, germanium detectors, whatever it is, we must have a, an efficiency curve. So we know that anything detected at whatever energy is, it will come with a, a particular efficiency for that gamma ray or for that X-ray to be detected or that uh, light to be detected from a telescope, right? So these things, uh, this, this, this is just a, a particular of the detection system that we have uh, and we want to measure whatever, either the light from a distant galaxy or a gamma ray coming from a nuclear reaction Anything we need to uh, we need to have an efficiency calibration when mm -hmm. we want to compare different gamma rays because they are different they are detected at different uh, efficiencies basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those three tests is just to convince yourself that your installation is working. So mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting. It might be interesting for you to see the figures and all the plots also from the COVID mini school. It's just to give you a taste of what it can do. And right. here, so you don't have to do any coding and there are instructions if you are interested, but you just have to paste that line here. So to download this file here, you could do code and then download the zip or you copy git clone and the link to this github over here the link that i took here so um you do this line in your terminal and i've already done this because i have the directory 
here root fe. So I'm going to go in that directory. And here, everything from everything that is here on the GitHub is now on my Ubuntu machine. I have the readme file with all the instructions and I have the C code. Here, we don't worry about this. We just want to run it. We want to see if fruit is working. And in the instructions, um, don't worry about greasy sort for now. We will run it directly with root. So to run a script in root, you do root and the name of the code of the script. I press enter. Root is processing the C code. And eventually, he does everything that the script asks, and it gives me a figure. So I just want you to try this so you can see that it can do more than 2 plus 2. It can plot figures. It can do uh, fits. So here, the line is a fit. And that is the medium test. That, that's it. Now I know root can run a script, and it can display a figure. This means I still can run graphical interfaces. If you want to see what the code is doing, you can look at this script in Emacs, of course, and you can see what the code is actually doing. Here, right. uh, I try to put as many comments as possible with the double slash. Uh, it's a commented line, so the code doesn't worry about this. Um, so we're not doing a coding, uh, a programming lesson today, but if you want, you can look at it. So if there's anything that you like about this code or later on you're, um, you're, you want to do a fit, you want to do a plot in root, you can go back to this code and already have a starting point on how to do that. Also, Nikita, can I, uh, can I show them from the mini school how to how to run now that they have all the tools? I want to from the COVID-19 mini school, you have all these programs. Yes. Right. Um, uh, maybe uh, I can share the screen for five minutes whenever you, you, you feel like. Yes, in a second, because that's where we are now. So this is yeah. the advanced. OK, step. OK. <laughs> So right. the next step, uh, so so far, I didn't ask you to do any editing. You were just blindly running things and seeing if they worked. If you want uh, to do a little bit more, uh, you can run the codes that Nico and Jeremy pre presented. So that would be my advanced test. With everything we've installed so far, you will be able to run those codes. So uh, it requires some editing and um, this is the link, of course, to the mini school, which is also on the GitHub UWC Nuclear. You have all the instructions there. You have all the links to the videos of the lectures, the links to the paper, to the COVID player, to the codes. You have everything uh, in that list over here. And um, again, to download all those files, you do git clone and the link here in your terminal. So now I will pass over to Nico and he can demonstrate once again how to run those codes. Right. So, okay, let me, um, let me quickly um, share the screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, here we go. So if I share the screen now, um, we, we have in this GitHub, we have all the, uh, uh, Ubuntu setup, but also if we go back here, we did this last month for the COVID-19 mini school. Uh, basically, it was a, a mini school on mathematical modeling on how to use root and C++, the old codes I've been, I've been using so far, although uh, Jeremy came with new codes, which are very similar, but maybe much easier to use. But uh, Basically, you you take the whole folder and put it in one of your directories, and you just run the whole thing. So, what you're going to do is you're going to I'm going to exit dot q, and you're in your home in the directory where you have installed all these programs, COVID nineteen mini school, and then you're going to use to do uh, ls minus lrt uh, dot c, 
I want to see the latest C file that I have. I, this is the command I put in Ubuntu. The latest file I modified with an extension C, which is the, the, the C++ code. And then I'm going to do root, as Nikita did. Um, we have uh, root install. And then we're going to compile it. To compile it, we want to do dot capital L. And then we compile the name of the program, which is this one here. I, I am uh, I just using the middle uh, button, as you can see in the mouse. You can middle button gets all this, all this. Uh, once you have uh, outline, whatever you want to write down, you just middle button and then copy and paste. So I compile it, and then this is a special command, which we're not going to explain right now. But we can do first. We can also do first is to uh, run Python three and update update the, the data, the death data for all these countries here, for the USA, Brazil, as they are, we are extracting basically right now, data from worldometers, and we are making, um, we are making um, data files for us to uh, read those and make these plots here. So here we have for the Western Cape, and this is the command that you need to always to use. This is the function and per country. And this is for the Western Cape. Seven means that we are average, averaging seven consecutive days. This is, a, this is a matter of which model we are using. We have different models that we have developed. Zero is the reduced model. One is the full model. We want to plot data from the 31st of May, 2021. Actually, from the 1st of April, 2020 to the 31st of May, 2021, and we want to fit from the 27th of November 2020 to the 30th of June 2021. So let's see what happened. And you get just enter, very simple. As you can see now, you get the, uh, the data or what is happening right now and the different plots. These are the different uh, D functions which fit the data nicely, the full data set for deaths per day in the Western Cape. But we can do the same thing for uh for south africa with the full model reduced model with this zero here uh we have the reduced model and you see that there's a little bump here which cannot be reproduced maybe a backlog or whatever but if you take the full model uh and you make a one right here this one is is for the full model then everything gets like we have a little wave that happened uh peaking here and uh, maybe this is the final outcome of COVID-19 but uh maybe not because the COVID uh, the virus may mutate and may change completely and we don't know what will happen next right but so far it looks very promising and these things you can do them right away yourself for any country you know if you want to do uh, I don't know if uh, Eastern Cape also but uh but you know you want to do any country Italy uh, let's see Italy what happened. See, Italy is already going on the fourth wave. There was a first wave here, second wave here, and now they're going for the fourth wave. So we have done two waves, and now they're coming down. But you see, this is uh, what you can do with any data at time zero. You know, one second, few seconds, you get all data. Um, you say, you know, Israel. Chile, UK, let's say what happened in the UK with all these vaccinations. You see, everything is coming down beautifully. So with the full model, you have really uh, two waves, one happening here, peaking in November, another one here peaking uh, in 27th of January or so. But then you see the vaccination is 50% of the population are already vaccinated. So it seems to be working nicely, playing nicely for them. Um, Hopefully this is the end of uh, COVID-19 in many countries, but still we want to make sure that after Easter, everyone is safe and we keep a couple of, uh, a few days of uh, relaxation, you know, before we go back to face-to-face to -face, uh, practicals. Face-to-face -face, uh, uh, lectures, they won't happen uh, most likely, but uh, maybe on Wednesdays we have one, time per week we may have a face-to-face -face lecture because we all miss each other 
but uh, we have to be very careful. And whenever I want to say one thing, whenever we do prax, we need to keep distancing or at all times. So you have groups of three, you have to still keep distancing. We need to keep the, the windows open at all times. We, we need to be careful that we don't have a, a spread of uh, COVID-19 on campus. Okay, so go back to you, Nikita. Thank you. Um, okay, Nikita, is, is, he, is he here? I think she may have, uh, uh, maybe she has an issue with the computer, but she will be back. So many things I can tell you. Well, Nikita is, is uh, maybe rebooting a computer. So like, uh, like yesterday, there was another mini school which came after our mini school because there was a, a, an issue that no one knew what Monte Carlo simulations were. So with this month, we have another mini school. It's only three hours on, uh, on Monte Carlo simulations. So all these mini schools, as uh, I mentioned, NIFEX uh, YouTube, they're in the YouTube channel of NIFEX. And the latest one is a very nice one on how to, how to do a Monte Carlo simulation of uh, an estimate, for instance, uh, for instance, et estimate pi. Uh, let me tell you how to estimate pi using a Monte Carlo simulation. So I don't know if this is a little bit too much for today. Nikita, are you around? Otherwise, I'm going to explain then how to do a Monte Carlo simulation on estimate pi. So how do we estimate pi? So you know, we, we make a, a special case uh, and we make a, a circumference of radius one. And basically, uh, it's going to be a square here. Uh, it's going to be a circumference here. Right. And so we are going to uh, throw random, random numbers or not random heats. And we are going to set up maybe some conditions that x squared, this is y, and this is x. So x uh, squared plus y squared must be less than one for to estimate pi. That was yesterday. We're going to estimate pi using a little Python script. So with this condition, uh, we're going to get heat inside and heat outside. So I'm going to quickly, uh, here we go. I'm going to quickly show. Nikita is going to show you this next, how to install this, uh, this uh, uh, spider or, uh, or Jupyter notebook, but here already I have a, a little code that you I going to I going to send it to you guys on the on the shut up on the on the on the chat <laughs> on, the, on the chat here and here we go uh, not this one uh, uh, what happened uh, let me see ah uh, here we go estimating pi. So that's a little, a little uh, Monte Carlo simulation, uh, which you can utilize here. Is is here in the in the in this editor in this pi there, but also, you know, you in the, decrease the number of uh, of hits, uh, and you play it. You just compile it. You have this. If you increase the number to a thousand and you do it again, you get this. You see. If you increase the number one well, ten thousand throws with 10,000, 10, then you get this. As you can see, we are getting closer to the number of what is pi, right? So basically we are doing pi over four, which is equal essentially to the number of throws, to the number of hits divided by the total number of throws. So we have a random variable here. It's a very simple code, as you can see, but basically we just send random numbers and we throw as many, thousand we, we increase this to a big number and we run it again we get uh, a much here we go you see now we get closer and closer to the value of pi 
So who was talking? You can't see your screen. Oh, sorry. You can't see your screen. screen. Okay. Uh, Let me see what happened. I thought. uh, uh, Sorry about that. I I thought, what is the. Where are you guys here now? I thought it was shedding. Uh huh. Let me see here. I want to locate you guys because I have many terminals open here. Uh, Let me see. Here we go. All right. Sorry, uh, I wasn't sharing. Uh, Is Nikita back or not? Here we go. Now you can see the screen. Okay. So I was saying that Within these uh, platforms, this uh, Jupyter Notebook or Spider Notebook, you can set up your Python script like we have here. These are always the same. The Spider Editor, and you have here all the different libraries that you need. Some of them, we are not, they're not needed for this particular case. This is probably the only one which is needed to plot our data. And then as I, I was explaining here, so we have uh, some conditions in the code and you have that pi over four is uh, approximately the number of hits uh, over the number of throws for a sphere of pi r square where r as we say is equal to one right for the area and this is one. Uh, so we have the mathematics and the control. And basically we start in this, uh, in this sphere, we start throwing random numbers and they will be hits or they will be throws outside or inside this. But the more, the more hits we have, as we, can, we have been proving, I, w- I was trying to prove you guys, but it wasn't sharing. So say we have 100 throws, this, and then we just run this little Python script. So we have uh, this, you know, this is basically the square and then drawing. These are the throws outside, and this is the, the, the heat inside the, the sphere, I mean, the, the circumference. And then we have here a, th- a thousand. And we're going to run that as well. And then you see, there's you start getting more blue points here. Um, you can get closer to the 3.32 for pi, 3.088 for pi. If we increase the number of throws, we can uh, get something much closer to pi and much, uh, right, you see, now we get uh, 3.14, right? So the more numbers, the more the more hits we throw. And here we go. The pi estimation is equal to four times the number of hits divided by the number of throws. As I was explaining here, for half a, a quarter of a circumfer- circumference, pi is equal pi divided by four is equal to the number of approximately equal to the number of hits divided by the number of throws. So the identification of, of pi will be approximately four times the number of hits right divided by the number of throws right so this is basically the formula we have done an estimation of pi which this with this condition here and the code is very simple as you can see we're just getting x random numbers y random numbers we are setting the condition x square plus y square less than one so these are our condition for a, a good hit, which are the blue points here. And basically we are plotting all these scatters. We are plotting the same equal axis X and Y. So we can make a square. And basically the pi estimation will be four times uh, the number of hits divided by the number of throws, right? As I explained right here. And depending on the number of throws, which is N, capital N, the number of throws is capital N, 
for our uh, area with a, a radius of one, right? This is our, our radius for a unit area or unit radius, we get, uh, as I say, everything depends. And the more numbers we add here, obviously the, the longer will be the calculation. It will take now a while to calculate the uh, determined pi, but basically this is a Monte Carlo simulation of pi, just estimating pi by throwing random numbers and uh, it will take a little bit of uh, more time right here because we have lots of numbers here. I don't know if, how long it will take, but the more numbers, obviously, the closer we get to 3.1416, which is the number of pi. The less, the, 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 the lower the number of hits. Uh, if we run it here, obviously you get nothing. 3.12, you know, it's close by, but, uh, but it's not, uh, you know, the proper estimation of pi. And pi here comes with the error, plus minus this uncertainty right there. So this is a very simple, this structure is always the same. It's calling all the libraries. This pandas, this uh, uh, numpy, there are many libraries that they are needed for different kinds of programs. And, uh, but for our purpose, you know, this is the actual very simple code very simple Monte Carlo uh, simulation that we have done of the number pi. So I'm going to stop sharing here and you're going to ask me some questions. I see Nikita is back. I, I'm back. Hopefully I, I covered you the best I could. So uh, any question guys? The best thing is that we just uh, we just go slowly through the through the through the program. I mean, through the video and understand the situation. You know, go through every uh, step. So, Nikita, I let you uh, finish the the session. I just was explaining the the Monte Carlo simulation of the mm -hmm. of the pi estimation. Very good. But we haven't installed Python. We have installed Python three. We have installed everything so far, right? Yes, on Ubuntu. But uh, we can also install Anaconda and uh, you didn't show Spider, right? No, Before no, you... I didn't show. I didn't show Spider yet. No, that's a. Yeah. So uh, it's just a one step here. Um, the good thing about Python is that it's very, very widely used, and it's also available directly on Windows by installing what is called Anaconda, which includes lots of different um, codes and interfaces to work with Python. So um, for example, I have CIDR open here. So this is directly on Windows and not in my <coughs> subsystem. And here this is Nico's code again, and it has a nice interface here. So uh, you can run a code by by pressing the arrow here at the top, and it will run the code the same way that Nico's, uh, Nico's example did. Here, by clicking on plots, I see the plot. So this is the exact same code that Nico showed. It is on the GitHub uh, over here. So at the top of the instructions, there is the pi.py. You can download this and run it either in your Ubuntu subsystem or install Anaconda and use it in Cider. Spider, yes. Um, so th that was the test to see if Anaconda worked. You can download this code and run like I just did. Uh, for each of the installations we did, I give you a link for more information and also remind you that Google exists and a lot of people go through the same uh, troubles and issues, computer issues that you might run into. So Googling things is an amazing way to troubleshoot things by yourself with the help of 
Google and everybody who uses Google. The last thing that I want to point out is a Python workshop here that I have linked on our uh, UWC Nuclear um, GitHub. So this is a workshop that I saw when I was starting with Python uh, during my postgraduate studies. And all those steps here is really introduction from uh, the basics of Python. And each section here brings you to a list of Jupyter notebooks. And you can look at that. It really goes into details of everything we can do with comments and codes. So um, that can be a good way to just get a taste of what Python can do. Uh, it's already well organized and it's something you can go through by yourself or with your colleague. So um, that is the Python workshop that we have available on our GitHub already. Um, and I think that that will be enough to get you started. Once you go through all those steps, you'll be set up to do literally in a, anything in any code. You'll be, a, you'll be comfortable installing packages and troubleshooting everything. So um, follow those steps. So, and uh, Nikita, um, yeah, sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. So just uh, I just was I didn't see the spider.org that link I just put in the chat. Can you put that there in the for those who wants to use the, the use the spider notebook? I see, is it is it there? No, it's not there. I have the link to Anaconda. It in, oh. it includes everything. Oh, okay, including a spider. Uh, Anaconda, yes, it includes spider spider it includes yeah. uh, the Jupyter notebooks and a lot of python tools so everything should be available from from here okay I see. Uh, I, yeah yeah better to have one package with everything yes uh, i think uh, installing this make sure you have everything so yesterday you asked me if i had the Jupyter notebooks i actually did not try them before this morning but I already had it installed because I installed Anaconda. So that was one less thing to worry about because it was already there. Beautiful. And can you run this code, the, the Monte Carlo code from Jupyter as well? Uh, I was not able to this morning, but yesterday you said you were able to? But only through my, uh, uh, through my Ubuntu subsystem, not through the Windows not through the through the browser so if you run if you install uh if you install uh jupyter lab so if you do sudo apt uh apt cache uh search for jupyter if you install jupyter in your in your ubuntu system together with the libraries with python 3 and all the libraries that you already installed then you run jupyter uh lab so just uh, yeah, catch a search, Jupiter uh, search, uh, Jupiter, uh, leave it like that, Jupiter, and then we have Jupiter Lab also is coming in. So once you run Jupiter Lab, then you go to the browser. Let's see, uh, install. Uh, let's see, go up there. Yeah, uh, uh, I'll have to try that. Um... There we go. There we go. So you have Jupiter. Uh, just install Jupiter there. I, in your in your I... Ubuntu. Well, I don't want two copies of it. Oh, okay. so I, I'm going to have to try to make it work. So uh, right, it's right. an issue I've had before. The Python, I, not all Python codes can run right away as a Jupyter notebook. So right. uh, it, it's something I've been working on. Um, that's, so, but, yeah. but this is the approach I use. I, I have that Jupyter installed on my Ubuntu subsystem. And then I can use Jupyter, it's called Jupyter Lab. Like here, let me let me quickly uh, uh, just show the the, the plan B. But so, it, uh, you're talking on Ubuntu. You don't have Windows, right? No, right, right. But the, but the Ubuntu subsystem should be the same. If you install uh, if you install the Jupyter on the Ubuntu subsystem, right? So I can run Jupyter mm -hmm. uh, Lab. See, there are many options. So just just run Jupyter Lab and uh, automatically open a Jupyter terminal with all the um, all the root Python and all the SageMath, which is also a very important tool for you guys. 
this is a very a very powerful uh, mathematical uh, like Mathematica, but for free. Um, basically, here I can uh, run this guy and say, okay, I want to install the program that uh, that we have here, and then I can just run it there on the Control C. I just run it here. Another one. Uh, I can go here and do. Uh, let me see. And let's see what happened. And then I run it here, and you get the the plot the same with the Jupiter Lab, right? So it's a different a different way. As again, as I, I want to outline that the the lower the numbers, the the more insensitive we are to the to the value of pi. Okay. But uh, you know, this is a way to run also from the uh, Jupiter Lab, running from inside the subsystem. Not from the right, not from the Windows machine. You had to copy and paste the code in a notebook. So I'm not sure if it's possible to run the Python code directly. Do you know? Yeah, you are running here the Python code directly. I mean, you are. Yeah, but you you copy pasted it in a new notebook. But you did you, not run a dot pi code. No, no, I just uh, no, I just ran it automatically here with this uh, with this executor was it's just mm -hmm. run the code right yeah that, that's work but it's in a dot i pi notebook yeah uh, this one yeah. Yeah, yeah so that that's might right. be the the extra step we have to do is to to copy oh, I see, I see. yeah yep. mm -hmm. but okay. this is a, a different approach you know either you have uh, or you have uh, jupiter from windows or anaconda from windows and you 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 open mm -hmm. up everything from windows or you run it from your, you install it in, in your Ubuntu subsystem, right? And do it as, as I'm doing right now. Okay, just wanted to give another alternative for those mm -hmm. who, run, uh, who run Ubuntu only. Uh, the, the Jupyter Notebook are going to be very useful and a lot of people use them. So it's good to get familiar with that. So the, the, the Python, workshop that I linked on the GitHub is all based in Jupyter Notebooks. So it's a notebook because you can write comment lines, you write text and lines of codes at the same time. So it's very useful in mini schools and summer school and uh, workshops because you can explain what you're doing. Right. So it's an option that we, we need to be comfortable with as well. Excellent. Um, any questions? I think, uh, I hope we are not overwhelming our students too much, <laughs> but uh, you can you can watch this, guys, thousands mm -hmm. of times because we're going to post this on the, um, everywhere. We're going to send it to the WhatsApp group, the link. We're going to post it on YouTube. We're going to post it on the Canva. We're going to post it. Uh, you're going to be able to access that through the VPN. That everyone is has, is having access nowadays, <clears throat> so you don't have to 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 be you know to spend all your data on watching these these videos. But I think uh, for the time being, it's probably enough, uh, Nikita, because we don't want to make a uh, two gigs of videos, you know, um, mm -hmm. and overwhelm the Canva system, you know, also the. Mm -hmm. So anything else? No, so I'm good. Uh, everyone just go through the steps and uh, I, I've always given you all the links. The, the GitHub page has all the links to everything, to extra support. It reminds you that Google is there and you know how to reach us. So let us know when you, you get stuck and uh, someone will help you. Your colleagues can help you. There's lots of help available and once everything is working, right. you'll be all set. It will all be uh, learning, fun learning after that. Right, so the, the learning curve will be will be tough, but uh, the sooner we, we, we attempt it, the, the, the sooner we come out. So as Nikita say, we're going to use Ubuntu, <clears throat> but not only, only we're going to use Ubuntu in, in terms of the operating system, 
but also we're going to use Ubuntu in terms of us behaving like Ubuntu. So for that uh, particular case, we want uh, we are going to be uh, taking care of one of you guys at the time, so you can go with. Uh, you also have some of your of your friends in within the class who knows how to use the Ubuntu system, know how to run. Uh, C++, you know, Python. And then what our, our goal is not to leave anyone behind. So um, 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 for everyone to be able to, to run codes, to change those codes and appreciate the, the beauty of, of learning programming and, and doing physics through it and mathematics. But don't think we're going to leave you uh, alone on this one. And if, if you want, you can send us a, a, a message. You can send a message to your tutor, Craig, to Nikita, to Tife, which uh, is he's also here. She has, we haven't we haven't introduced her yet, but Tife uh, Bucher, she is also one of your of your of your lecturers for the Prax, and she is also very welcoming to everyone. She is from South Africa, and she uh, knows you very well, and knows the background. Craig, Nikita, myself, Shad, Ansel. You know we have lots of people. Who will help you, um, Sunet, in the in the PC lab? So we want to help you, but not uh, just by saying it. So if you want, uh, Sola, Justin, Asile, Bivang, and Suki, just contact contact us, Salman, uh, anyone you know. You can contact one at a time. So Shad can help one of you, Ansi can help another one, I can help another one, Nikita can help another one and so on and so forth, and you can help other people. And this is how we're going to uh, approach this year from a, un, an Ubuntu perspective, not only with the operating system, but in real life. Okay, guys? I think, uh, Nikita, you want to say something? I think we are, we are done for today. It's a, a lot of information in one go. So next week, we are going to have a, a, maybe a, 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 a slow down session. We're going to, to taste a little bit what we have done today. I think a couple of sessions on this will be very useful. Don't you think so? So it doesn't come like a one, one go. So we, we provide more examples and we go a little bit more in, into detail. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Guys, any question? Siva? Anyone wants to say something before we go? And then if he, he just... As I say, just send us a, an email or post something on the on the WhatsApp group or let us know of anything, any issues that you have. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so Shad, anything? What can we tell your oh. friends who are very shy? Hello, Pro. Why, why, why your friends Do are very you shy? Think you might be Okay, if you can show us how you would make a a graph with Python. One might... Yeah, yeah, we can do that. I mean, we have done that already with this uh, this Python. That basically was a kind of a graph, but we can do that also with XM Grace. I like, I like. I, we are going to show you next day. Actually, I will show you how to make a graph with Python. Nikita, you can do that, and I will show them with XM Grace. Is that that's, that sounds good? Sure. Okay. Yeah, but I think XM Grace has a, a, is a is a better software because it has been tested for I, I tested uh, XM Grace for many years, and that's the same thing as Origin. And I mean, I, I've been testing the, the regression, the the different capabilities. So we're going to do that next next uh, Wednesday. Next Wednesday, we are going to teach you how to plot data uh, in different ways in Python in C++, we already, we already have the tool and in Python as well. I mean, today we already did it with this uh, print uh, and this, uh, this function that we have there for the, for the Monte Carlo. Basically, you are plotting the hits and the, and, the, and the random numbers that we are throwing out, right? So mm -hmm. that uh, little script that we showed today has also the possibility to plot this data with the condition that x squared plus y squared is less than less uh, less than one, right? Mm -hmm. So 
but we we are going to we're going to go and expand on this so we we, we learn on how to uh, plot data i think plotting data is very important so next week we'll go a little bit more a little bit through this quickly for us to revise things but then we're going to focus on on plotting data all right so then for next wednesday everybody should be able should be ready to plot data so you have a week to make sure your machine is working right 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 okay so uh people we'll see you on wednesday thank you so much nikita for such a beautiful uh lecture today Thank you, Nico, for your explanations as well. <laughs> okay, all the best. And um, we'll see you next uh, Wednesday. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye, Thank you so much as well. Thank you. <laughs>